My name is Patrick Gantz. I'm with SGI, and this is the uh, Ice Cube Air Modular Data Center. So, how is that uh, this new uh, unit different from some of the ones we've uh, seen from uh, SGI in the past? Well, this is uh, revolutionary. It's a modular data center, and it's absolutely different from anything that we've done or anything anyone else has done. Uh, I can go into great detail if you'd like. Well, give us a, a sort of the, the bird's eye view of, of what's okay. uh, what's new okay. and cool about so, the, this uh, particular so unit. The keys to this unit are the fact that it's expandable, and that goes along with the strategy that SGI just released yesterday. And the strategy is small, medium, and large. Right? This is a, a show unit, so it's a representation of the technology that we have to offer here at SGI. And when I say expandable, it is truly expandable with common hot and cold aisles. So if you don't mind if I turn around a little bit? Sure. So uh, I'm going to start here and say that uh, the expandability, if you can kind of see it, goes in this direction, right? And so what we've done here with this particular modular data center is we've taken what normally is in an ISO shipping container and turned it sideways. And what I mean by that is in a typical ISO shipping container, you have issues around space, right, for the operational people, for maintenance people, etc. So what we've done is turned the rack sideways and allowed them to expand in that direction. This is a four-rack unit. Again, this is a little bit smaller than the actual production unit but uh, it expands out to 16 racks. And the strategy is, again, small, medium, and large. Right, so the small unit is four racks, expands out to 16. The medium is 10 racks, same design that we're gonna talk about here today, that starts at 10 racks and expands out to 40 racks. And the large starts at 20 racks and expands out to 80 racks. Common, hot, and cold aisle. So let's, uh, let's go through a little bit and I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the different uh, technical points of the unit. Sounds great. Okay. okay. So, again, we'll start here with the uh, outside air uh, temperature and humidity sensor, right? It's very simple. And what this does is uh, lets the monitoring control system, which we'll go into great detail, know uh, what kind of air and temperature and humidity is going on outside the unit. So, um, you can see here we have the air inlet, where we have two separate levels of, of louvers. And uh, the air enters the system this way. It's a single pass system. So the air enters this way in a positive pressure and passes all the way through the system. And when we go inside, you'll see where the air comes in and where the fans are and how that relates to where the servers and the racks are and enters and leaves the unit through the other side. And we're going to talk about a couple of different global ambient temperature and humidity conditions and how the control system uses even the server's own heated air to, uh, to uh, bring it back around and keep the servers warm in cold climates. So okay. I'm going to walk this way. Sounds good. So you see here, again, this is a show unit, so we're able to show you the uh, electrical panel, the uh, monitoring control system, and a touch screen here for uh, customers. Again, this is a fully remotely manageable system. Uh, we're going to show you some of that here uh, shortly. Uh, so you have some, some indicators here about what's going on in the system, and then everything else you can do remotely. And this is basically a PC, right? So we have a PC system here for those that are technical and understand monitoring controls. It's a, a PLC system. Uh, on the bottom with a, a PC on top. So we're able to custom design software, APIs, things like that for the, for the, uh, for the remote management of the system, which is enormously helpful. Um, we're actually going to push this software into the next version of our uh, SGI uh, management software that we currently have uh, out as a product. So you have here is you have the, one of the doors. So I'm going to step inside just a little bit and kind of let you see uh, we have, immediately when you come in here, you have the VESTA system, the leak detection system, and you have the fans, which I'm going to go into in great detail. Uh, because this is a show unit, uh, the, the production unit actually has bus bars that run, two 400 amp bus bars that run the direction that the unit expands this way. So uh, the racks that are here, the four post racks, uh, also you, you can get the unit uh, without racks. So it actually comes uh, off the shelf empty, and you can wheel in your own racks right off the data center floor. Or you can purchase the four post racks, and, and we are vendor agnostic, excuse me, or vendor neutral, so it allows you to uh, uh, rack and stack your own servers in the unit. Okay. Right? So you can start with four, get that going, and expand out to 16. So I'm gonna go in here and talk about the fan and the cooling system a little bit. So what you have in here is uh, four high, high efficiency variable feed speed fans, excuse me. And one of the nice things that, that we've done here with the design is if you, you notice that the IT is on this side and the mechanical electricals on this side. So it separates out the type of uh, maintenance and uh, 
recurring maintenance that has to happen where the IT guys can work in, on their systems. And again, this, the production unit actually has a much wider cold aisle and a much wider hot aisle and a, and a central hot aisle that runs the full length of whatever, whatever unit you purchase. So these fans, if you notice them, they're actually at an angle. So they're actually blowing air across this way. Right? These fans are blowing to the left, these fans are blowing to the right. And so what that does is allows us to do very, very allows us to do a lot of air mixing, let's put it that way. And the air mixing actually allows us to provide a consistent temperature from the bottom to the top of the rack. Depending on the outside temperature, we want to make sure that we have a certain inlet temperature for the servers. And that inlet temperature, uh, the, the boundaries, again, it's, it's, it's primarily set initially at uh, between 50 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, 20 to 80, degree, 80 degrees uh, relative humidity as far as the temperature sensors and the humidity sensors that are, that, that, are, that are being controlled by the algorithms. But the customer can, can actually tune that to whatever they want. So if they want to shrink it down to between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit uh -huh. at a different kind of humidity level, then they can go ahead and do that. We'll show you how they can do that in the control system. And, and uh, how high are the racks? They're okay. somewhat different. They're not standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are uh, these racks are again the show unit. The production unit is 51U racks, and we provide uh, 35 kW of cooling with outside air and a garden hose, which we'll show you here shortly, uh, to those racks. So we again 51Us standard. Uh, if you're going to roll in your racks, that provides you 89.25 inches of headroom to roll in your own racks. Uh, and, and we supply 35 kW of power to each one of the rack locations. Okay. okay. So again, it's, it's what you see here is you have, these are actually hardwired, and again, I mentioned the bus bars. Um, what you're going to have here uh, in the production unit is, is similar to this, where you have plugs. In the production unit, we bring 415 or 400 power, volt power, all the way to the racks and split that up into three phases. Uh, in this unit, you see we have uh, 208 power and we have 60 amps going to each rack, two times 60 amps going to each rack. Okay. So I'm going to exit out this way. And I'll bring you around here to uh, some of the secret sauce. Uh, <laughs> in here we have, uh, we have uh, outside air, as you, we talked about before. We have a three-stage evaporative media system. Right. So what that allows us to do is to control, using an evaporative media system, the rate of cooling. Okay? And also what we have in here is an optional, uh, optional item for customers, which is the uh, DX or chilled water coil. So for customers that are in, in extreme environments where the temperature and humidity are at a point to where just straight evaporative media will not support it, uh, our re global research showed that about 7% of the uh, places on the planet, the locations that we looked at, uh, and that was almost 7,000 locations. About 7% of them actually required over uh, about 30 hours or less per year of supplemental cooling. So we provide the optional supplemental cooling of DX or chilled water coils. So if a customer has a, a DX, uh, doesn't have a chilled water system, they could, they could add a condenser to the top of the unit and they have a, a, a fully uh, supported uh, cooling system. Uh, if they have a chilled water system, they can add a chilled water valve in here and add a chilled water system into this. Um, I'm not going to open this up today, but we'll give you uh, a little insight. There's filters in here. Uh, you can add filters that are, are a distance away from the outside of the unit to keep uh, the temperature, if it gets to the cold environments, uh, to keep the filters from freezing. Um, this particular unit, you can actually shut the dampers down 100%. In cold environments, what we use is the hot air from the servers, and we bring that back around the top of the unit to keep the servers warm. And we also use that to uh, regulate some humidity. Uh, I can go into the, how we regulate temperature and humidity in great detail if you'd like. But in essence, that's what you have. I mean, if you'd like to see the back of the systems and show you where they, so walk Yeah, this if way. you could just give us a quick uh, look at. So again, in a single pass through system, if it's not in a real cold environment, uh, we, we would, we would allow the hot air to come straight out of here. So when we turn the fans on here in a second, you'll see that. And again, the production unit has a much larger hot aisle, uh, so you have an actual hallway here. Um, you can see that we're bringing in power to the racks. This is standard, what anybody in the data center business would see as standard four post racks. We bring in 400 to 415 to 30 amps times two uh, for redundancy. And we have an A and a B bus bar that's above here that they connect to. And you, again, you see the leak, the leak uh, detection system. So uh, it's a, I like to say it's a, uh, 
enormous amount of engineering into a very simple design. It's, uh, it's, it's, we've done, a, we've done a, a lot of homework to figure out exactly how uh, to make sure that these are the most important items in the unit, which are the servers, and keep them at their right temperature and humidity for the inlet of those devices. So what I'm able to do is, uh, I'll turn this so you can see a little bit better. What I'm able to do here is I'm constantly monitoring the temperature, humidity, outside, inside, inlet to the rack. I'm monitoring the power. Uh, I'm monitoring alarms if the, if the systems, the doors are open, the lights are on, uh, what states the evapor evaporative media system's in. Um, a little picture for customers that helps them, a little 2D picture. It helps them quickly look and see where the dampers are if you're in a knock or something like that. And again, simply straightforward, the doors are open or shut. In fact, the, the door is still open. We should probably shut that. Uh, a psychometric chart that helps uh, those really technical guys see where the system is running within uh, that bound those boundaries. And again, we can go into that in great detail. Then here are the set points. So I mentioned before that we can actually set temperature and humidity uh, of the system to, to, con to react to. And what I'm going to do right now is, is straightforward. Take it from 15% fan speed up to 100, and you'll hear the system speed up. And so while that's doing that, all the stuff in the door. just done is really spin up the fans and spin them back down. And because it's positive pressure, one of the reasons why we've gone to positive pressure, uh, one of the key reasons is because if you deploy this in an environment that has particulates on the outside and someone goes inside and wants to work inside, you want to have the pressure pushing outwards when they open the door. If it's negative pressure, you're going to be sucking everything into the unit. So you saw that when I opened the door, the pressure from the door blew out. Sure. So, um, that's, again, positive pressure allows us to do that, allows us to keep anything contaminant out of the unit as well as humidity, when, and, and it's something we do get concerned about, right, when it's real humid outside. You don't want humidity and hot air in hot environments. You're in Singapore, you're, you're in uh, the Brazilian rainforest. You don't want, uh, you don't want uh, the temperature and outside humidity to come into the unit. We want to keep full control over that at all times. Okay. Any well, other questions? No, I think that the, the, I appreciate you taking a, a few minutes to provide our readers with a, a look at the, the new product. So thanks so much for your time. Thanks for your time as well. Okay.